Hey everybody, in this video I have the displeasure to talk about what has probably been one of the worst days in fish keeping for me uh, in the time I've been doing it since, uh, at least keeping Pleco since 2018, keeping fish all my life, but I've never, you know, I, I've had some bad days, I had some mass die-offs early on when I didn't know as much, but ever since I've kind of gotten my feet under me and gotten more knowledgeable, things have gone pretty smoothly, uh, but today was just a, a, a tough day. Uh, so I had a, a couple of things happen. I'm going to start with this this little guy right here. This was um, a, a little juvenile L136C from uh, Nelson over at RKD Aquatics. Uh, I've been holding on to this one for a few months now. I've been growing it out since it was maybe 1.25 inches. I definitely uh, at least doubled it in size. And I had four of these from Nelson, and what happened was I recently pulled all four, and I split them two and two uh, in breeder boxes to take some pictures. I was thinking about maybe selling two of them. This was actually one of the nicer two. I was going to keep the nicer two, um, but stupidly, I left them in the breeder box longer than I should have, and the other one that was in the breeder box with this one, I'm pretty sure, beat up on this one. Uh, damaged the tail a little bit, nothing super, super serious, but enough that uh, in infection could take place and kind of get a foothold and... Um, I just th this one was all my fault. I didn't, I, I didn't take the inf the the injury serious enough. I could have added something to the water. I could have separated the fish in isolation. I kind of just left the fish in there, um, and, and life was busy for a couple of days. And I this is one of the tanks on the on the bottom of the rack, so I don't get to look in there as much. And this kind of just got away from me. And by the point that I was able to isolate and start medicating, it was already too late. The injury. Uh, had expanded, it was fungusing over. This one, this one was all my fault. But it's just a, a tough, tough pill to swallow because I haven't, uh, I haven't lost a fish in so long. Uh, you know, my my quarantine policies are pretty good. I, I'm not like an importer. I'm not importing dozens of or hundreds of fish. I, you know, I only buy from sources I trust, and I only buy every now and then. Most of the stuff I have, I've bred in house, so I, I don't have too many deaths unless it's you know fry, which you're always gonna have a couple die, but. Yeah, this, this was a tough one. Uh, moving over here, this this was an even tougher one. This was an L136C adult from uh, my good friend Chu over at Hazel Aquatics, and this one is still a mystery to me. I don't I don't blame Chu whatsoever. These these actually just came in today, and they all came in looking great, perfectly, you know, healthy visually. Um, you know, I I, I uh, acclimated them to the tank like I normally do. I, I pre-treated the tank like I normally do. Everything was to my normal uh, routine um, that I've been doing for years that I've kind of learned from the pros. And uh, I, I let them in the tank, and a, a few hours later I checked in the tank, and I noticed one of them kind of was sitting in the same spot that he was, he or she uh, was sitting um, when I had looked a few hours ago. And it didn't look like it was moving a whole lot, so I, I stuck a net in there and I moved some stuff around. And sure enough, this one this one was stiff, not breathing, dead. Um, just randomly dead. No signs of illness, no no nothing, no, no signs of injury. It, it's still a mystery to me. My running theory is, I, I don't know, a heart attack, a stroke, maybe choked on something. I mean, I, I guess us as humans, uh, we, we can die randomly sometimes with no visual um, clues as to what killed us, you know, internal problems that cause a sudden death. So I guess why couldn't it happen to an animal as well? And that's that's kind of just the running theory I'm going with here. I mean, I, I've bought fish from Chew for years, and his, his fish are top-notch, so definitely don't blame him by any means. It's just kind of a random act of God, it seems. And the only saving grace in this is that it was, uh, I don't want to say not one of the nicest ones in this group, but I mean, if I had to rank the eight L136C adults that I got in this shipment from Chew... I'd probably put it in the bottom three, so I guess that's the only saving grace is that it wasn't, like, the nicest one in the group, but it, it's still a real gut punch to lose a fish that is, you know, that high value. I mean, between this one and the juvenile that I showed you that I also lost, you're, you're probably talking a grand, at least. So, that was whatever. I mean, one was my fault, one was just an act of God, you know, not, nobody could have prevented that or, or seen it coming, but uh, things come in threes. There was a, a third uh, gut punch in this particular day. I, in order to get those eight L136C adults uh, from Chu, I had uh, conducted a trade with him, as I always do. He's, great, uh, he's a great trading partner. Um, I had sent him five uh, L46 Zebra Pleco adults and one of them was that wavy male uh that i had 
done a video on. I sent him a group of five. I believe it was two male, three female. So perfect group, you know, young adults should be breeding soon, hopefully. Um, and as it turns out, there was, uh, I ship it via UPS pirate ship, like I always do. There was a, uh, a major issue over in, I think it was Louisville, Kentucky. Their major international hub was like closed down or n nothing was moving because of thunderstorms or something. That's what I was told from a customer service rep. So uh, nothing was transiting the system, the UPS system, as it should. There were delays because of weather, um, you know, whatever. It happens. But UPS really screwed me and a few other people over that day. Uh, my, my buddy Nelson, he actually was shipping something to Chew the same day, and his didn't even arrive alive. Um, thankfully, the Zebra Plecos did arrive alive, uh, but they just barely made it. I mean, you can see from the video clips, they're as red as Zebra Plecos can get. They were, they were going into shock because I had... I had shipped these with a 40-hour heat pack. Could I have shipped them with a 72? Yes, and maybe I should have given the value. That, so that that's on me, but it was only supposed to be an overnight shipment, and I drop off at the end of the day just before the truck leaves. So typically, my boxes are, you know, sometimes in transit for only 16 hours, and that's with a 40-hour heat pack. I usually don't have any issues. The biggest issue with this was even though UPS had those weather delays, my shipment was delayed not by a few hours. It's not like it was supposed to get there at noon and it got there at 6. It was delayed by a full 24 hours. For 24 hours, it did not move. That was the part that frustrated me. The, the overnight thunderstorms or whatever was going on in Louisville, it stopped my package from moving for 24 hours, and I know that there weren't, you know, 24 hours of plane closures and all that, so that was the frustrating part. I, I can't speak to the whole UPS system and whatever. I'm not, you know, I don't work for UPS, but I tried to call my local UPS uh, facility because um, I knew it was just sitting there. The next day, I had shipped it. I think it was on Tuesday. And Wednesday, I could see from the tracking that it was still at my local UPS warehouse, just sitting there. So I tried calling them to ask if I could uh, to ask if I could get the package. Uh, you know, I'd rather put them back in my tanks than sub than than to subject them to more uh, temperature fluctuations and you know the potential for the box to be delivered after 40 hours. Um, which it was delivered. It was delivered at 42 hours, I think. The heat packs are just barely still working. Um, but my uh, my local UPS warehouse kind of just gave me the runaround and told me they couldn't find the package, which was complete bull because their tracking is you know pretty sophisticated and pretty good, honestly. I've always trusted UPS's tracking over FedEx's. It's always been pretty good. And uh, yeah, it was, it was still showing up at, at the warehouse, but nobody could seem to find it. So Anyway, the package did get to chew after uh, 42 hours. They were just barely alive. They're still hanging on as I speak. Um, but there was a lot of stress for maybe 24 hours when I had found out that the shipment was going to be delayed to the point where it finally made it to him, uh, you know, two days later instead of one day later. So, um, yeah, it was just a very, very stressful and annoying day. I'm glad to be past it. I still have plenty of L136s for my breeding projects. I'm going to make a group and a, uh, a group of six and a group of seven. Um, probably gonna have to throw a bunch of b-roll footage over this video because I think I've talked a lot longer than the footage that I recorded but uh, yeah so I, I wanted to make this video because I, I wanted to show that it's not all rainbows and sunshine you know I, I post a lot of videos of my breeding successes and my setup and how well it's working for me um, but I wanted to document the bad days too because that's that's part of this and I don't want to give anybody the false impression that it's all just gonna go uh, perfectly because it's not and you know you can try to avoid things as much as you can but sometimes you have things like shipping delays and uh, you know random fish heart attacks that you just you can't avoid so I wanted to kind of show that side of the hobby as well uh, but anyways if you found this video interesting in any way feel free to hit that like button and if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome pleco content just like this and as always thank you for watching